Hey, good afternoon everyone. It's Tracker Man 44. If y'all live out in the country, y'all know what septic systems are like. Sometimes uh, septic tanks are down really, really low and they have to have what's called extension rings to get your clean-out cap up high to ground level so that the septic sewer services can, you know, take the cap off and, and draw them out. And my son's got one that the extension rings have collapsed on, so we need to make him a couple of 17-inch extension rings. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, sheet metal form that's going to be 3 inches wide, 7 inches 17 inches long and of course it's going to have an inside and outside so that we have that that ring he's already made the reinforcing rod in the fashion which he needs to have to sit down inside the uh, the cement or the concrete when he pours it uh, so they have reinforcement of course to it. Uh, if we're going to make a uh, circular form we have to know of course what the uh, what the length of the metal is that after we roll it and put our our attachments on the end uh, we need to cut it to in order to make it end up reasonably close to what it is that we're uh, wanting to make and it's nominal. We can be a quarter an inch or a half an inch above or below and it's still going to work fine because it's three inches thick and it's only concrete. You know it's going to be subterranean underground anyway. So the outer ring needs to be 22 inches in diameter because the inner ring needs to be 16. So 16 and 3 on either side gives you 22 for the outer diameter. So if you know, uh, you remember geometry in school, circumference equals pi times diameter. Pi is 3.14. So we take the desired 22 inch diameter that we want multiply it times 3.14 and we come up with 69.08. So we can just call that 69 and a tenth or maybe even 69 and an eighth of an inch. So let's just call it 69 and one eighth of an inch. The joint that I want to make on each end is going to take up three eighths and three eighths. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll add three quarter inch, three quarter inches to the eighth. So that's going to be 69 and seven eighths by the 17 inch cut size. So that's two times the amount of overlap we need on the end, uh, plus a little bit for the thicknesses of metal, which is going to be compensated for when we change the 0.08 to, uh, to 0.125, which is what the decimal equivalent of the 1 8 is. So our cut size is going to be 69 and 7 8 by 17 inch. So we're going to cut that, and then we'll go about the business of attaching that, show you how that's done. Anyway, we went ahead and we've drawn us out a scribe line at 69 and 1 8 of an inch. So we're going to add the amount to it that is going to be the joint and we decided that's going to be three quarters of an inch so I'm going to add both three eighths to this end because we'll mark one three eighths on this end and one three eighths on the other end so now we're going to go ahead and cut the 17 inch height now for a project like this we don't have to use brand new metal this happens to be used metal I just kind of saved the old stuff because of for specifically for projects like this because there's no reason to spend good money on something that's just not necessary. I've actually got me a cameraman today. This metal, by the way, even though it's used, is also called paint grip material because it's made to, without any uh, changes to it, to be painted directly on without having to deal with the, uh, the galvanize that will cause your paint to immediately uh, peel right off. So this is a paint coat, paint coat or paint grip material. So now I said we're going to do a 3 8 joint, so, or a 3 8 latch joint. So here's my 3 8 scribe right here. So we'll mark that on this side, and we'll turn it over and get the back side. We're going to notch off a little bit of the edge just to make it less sharp. And now we're going to go ahead and fold this. So I've got help today, uh, so that's kind of cool. So we're going to slide it through from the back side. We've got that on the 3 8 line. We're going to bring it all the way up to top. And we're going to spank it just a little bit. We're not going to latch it down real tight. He's going to slide it out, invert it, and he's going to pass me the other side again. 3 8 of an inch. Put a little spank on it. Now he's just going to roll that around and attach it. It's real floppy, real flimsy, but it doesn't really matter for what it is we're doing. He's going to hold that in real tight, and we're going to move it over here to the vise. Okay, now this is not truly a, a tall cone anvil, and it's not truly a stake either, but uh, whenever you bend in metal, you can use anything that, uh, that you can use to bend on, and you can refer to it as a stake if you so like. But uh, this is a tapered uh, something or other. I have no idea what. It's nice, it's heavy cast, and it stands on the floor, 
and whenever I'm pulling wires and stuff, I set my conduit on here, and I've got two of these, and that's how I pull my wire off the reels. I have no idea if that's what it's for or not, but it's going to do different duty today. He's going to slide that on there, right on that joint that we're talking about. And I'm going to get him to pull on it really tight and hold that in. Now for this, we're going to use uh, an old tool and a new tool. This thing right here, this is called a seamer. It's a 3 8 seamer. It's older than me and you put together, and I don't even care how old you are. It's older than me and you put together. And then it's, and it's a Pexto, which is Pexto and Wilcox from way back in the 1800s. And then we've got a brand spanking new uh, ball peen hammer. That's not necessary, but it happens to be one I have. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how this works. He's going to pull that out tight, this joint really tight for me. I'm going to set this on here with that 3 8 indention. Set it on there. I'm going to tap it. And if you notice, we set that down. Now we're going to go to the other side because we don't want it to spread or, or uh, shrink. Now we know it's not going to go anywhere. You got to keep it centered on your anvil, centered on your stake. We'll go back up and we're going to tilt it back a little bit and go back up the other way. I don't know that you can see that very well, but there's your joint right there. There's one last thing that you need to do to make sure that that holds in place. Take a regular old scratch all. Set it, come down here to the other end, set it, split the difference. And here's our seam, or here's our joint here. Okay, we're trying to get you an idea what the inside looks like. You can see it looks like a butt joint inside here. It's just nice as can be. I'm going to turn it over. And hopefully you can see that fairly well too. You can see the, the folds. You can see the punch marks. And all we have to do is kind of get a little bit of an oval out of it. And we can do that by just kind of pressing down on it. Again, this is not that critical because it's nothing but a concrete farm. There we go, that's holding reasonably close. So if I just throw my tape across there, and look at there, 21 and 15 sixteenths, 22, dead nut on 22. So that's gonna be close enough. So now what we have to do is make the 16 inch insert to set in here to give us the three inch perimeter for the to hold the concrete in place as he sets his reinforcing rod down inside. Okay, so here we have it. Quick and simple, 17 inch tall farm for a three inch uh, extension ring for his uh, septic system. He's gonna cut three inch plugs of wood and set three, uh, four of them around the perimeter to hold this stable at three inches. And then he'll pour his concrete down at the bottom until it gets stable from the bottom up. And then he'll go ahead and pull these out once he gets up to the top and then just let it cure. But he's got the reinforcement rod that he's gonna go ahead and drop down inside, you know, to make sure that if it does crack, it doesn't fall apart. And this is a very simple project. And as long as you guys have access to one of these little tools, all it does is has a little channel in it. I've got them with an eighth inch, I've got them with a quarter, a three eighths, half inch, and three quarter inch uh, groove, and that's all for the different size of overlap joints that you want to make. Just proved you don't have to have all the fancy equipment to do that. You can actually fold those by hand and then go ahead and use this seamer to set it in place and then lock it in with your punch. So at any rate, you know what? He's going to go pour some concrete. And... Well, we discussed the possibility that the form was going to have to be destroyed in order to get out and sure enough that definitely was the case uh, so that's the remnants of the farm but you but can see the freshly poured concrete riser right there that's 17 inches tall it's also sitting right on top of the septic system and it's ready to backfill it worked out just exactly uh, the way we decided so once he backfills it he's actually making a new cap for it because obviously it's a little larger diameter than the original but the original cap was broken anyway so here's his wooden farm in the uh, the new cap that he's poured it's got reinforcing rod inside and it's got four recesses underneath for getting your fingers underneath to get a handhold to lift it off. So here he is getting ready to pop it out of the farm. Now I say pop it out of the farm, he's got to struggle with it just a little bit because it uh, kind of swells a little bit, you know, against the wood and all that. But um, there's your indentions there for, for reaching underneath and getting a grip on it. You'll see him pick it up here in just a minute once he wrestles it out of the, uh, out of the farm. But uh, you kind of ask yourself, maybe why uh, why we go through all this kind of a trouble well you know the 
replacement riser was going to cost like 75 bucks and it wasn't even going to be tall enough to extend the height that he needed it to extend. Uh, plus, the riser didn't even come with a cap, so he's going to have to buy an additional cap on top of it. So, uh, you know, for a couple of $3.50 bags of, of pre-mix, maybe three bags of it or whatever, you know, and some scrap metal, we were able to get this accomplished, you know, like I say, quick and, and uh, easy, and it'd give him a pretty pretty superior product. So you're going to see it come up right now, sitting on the, uh, on the riser and in its complete form. And here it is, completely backfilled and ready for the grass seed. Obviously, we did this last fall. A little project to completion worked out just fine, and uh, you also got to see a nice, neat little sheet metal uh, sheet metal lock joint that you can seam and form by hand. So you know what? Hit Track Man 44, and I am out of here.